I'm Panini Pete, a professional chef with small town roots and a passion for one of a kind places. I'm day tripping down the back roads and main streets of America to prove that small towns are extraordinary destinations, each one rich in history and full of happiness, where people care about people and treat you like one of their own. They celebrate life, tradition, and one of a kind food culture. So join me as we gather all the local ingredients to serve up a big helping of small town flavor. Patience boys was wearing thin Where's my lot begin? And where is my elusive gem? Reflecting in the sun For all the myths I thought I knew Faded as I grow There's lightning then follows thunder Just before daylight Hey. Hello, Hello, how are you? Welcome. I'm Pete. Pete, it's nice to meet you. Welcome to Kurt's Restaurant. Thank you so much. Good to finally meet you, Debbie. Here at famous Kurt's Restaurant in Bardstown. Tell me a little bit about the history here. My grandparents opened the restaurant in 1937 after mm -hmm. the 37 flood. And um, the good news is we're still here. It's 75th anniversary year. And years. my mom is here side by side with my brother and I every mm -hmm. meal, every day. And she's we're passing down the traditions that stayed in the family heard nothing but amazing things about the skill of fried chicken you do here. You guys do it right. You've been doing it the same way for 75 years. Yes, sir. It's really that famous. <laughs> well, I was wondering if maybe I could get a peek back there and maybe get a little bit of a look into how you guys prepare that. I have Charles in the kitchen waiting to show you and, and introduce you to our our wonderful fryer and come on back to the kitchen. We're going back to cook the skill of chicken at Kurtz's. Come on, guys, this is a rare treat. Okay, Pete, this is our fry cook, Donna Litzy. She's uh, How you doing, Donna? been here 11 years. 11 years. She and I'm going to let you here. all take it. Are we gonna, you're you're not going to cook with me, Charles? I better not. I'm in good not. hands here. She's the one. She's all right. One. We're going to get to work. Thanks, buddy, for the intro. you got great, beautiful iron skillets here. Yes, sir. Where do we start off? You we turn start a off the fire. Heat. Yes, and we start off heating up our lard. We use half and half. Half of it's from what's been used already. Then we'll add a little bit of fresh lard. This is the chicken surgeon. You can see she's got her scrubs on. <laughs> she's cooking this legendary product right here. I will flour the chicken. Do you do any seasoning in there or it's just a straight? No, sir. It's just straight. Uh, I think it's Kentucky Colonel seasoning. And I noticed you put the bigger pieces in first so they yeah. get a head start. Uh -huh. So not only will the smaller ones come out early, they go in last. Yes. It usually takes about 20 minutes. Right. And we'll just control your heat. We started off pretty hot first and then. Once it starts cooking, about halfway through, we'll turn it down and we'll just keep flipping it, keeping the eye on it. Normally, lunchtime, you don't get the skillet fried chicken. No, it's just dinner time. It's dinner time. Uh -huh. So this is an extra special treat. Yes, it is. Are you okay with that? Or <laughs> I'm are we good with throw it. you out of your no, rhythm? No, you're fine. <laughs> it's impossible to throw you out of yes. your rhythm. So on a, on a typical dinner, how, how much fried chicken would you make over here? All six burners will be filled up. You do all like six burners. All six six burners. skillets going at once. And you can even do like two or three rounds of all six skillets. And then two or three <laughs> rounds full. And that's yeah. all you doing that? Yes, sir. You don't have like six other cooks, one for each skillet? Yeah. Well, I'll have a, the guy you met earlier help out Charles. So. Charles, you, you can get a little work out of yeah. him now. And, then. <laughs> and we do more than just chickens. So we do livers and plus the cornbread. So you have a lot going on at once. So that's all going on at once. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go, Donna. Time for the first flip. So you get them nice and they're really just a nice golden brown. They're not yes, getting sir. real, but no. you get enough to get that base and then you start working. Yeah. And then you adjust the heat a little bit and bring it down. Yeah, we'll bring it down just a little. So that's got the real art of skillet chicken is, is, is attaining that nice crust, yes. but still giving it time to cook all the way. It's uh -huh. bone-in chicken. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be moist. But if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to be serving raw chicken. Or burnt chicken. Or burnt chicken. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. You can add a little bit in there. Uh -huh. 
slow it down yeah, a little so and keep it, keep uh -huh. it dry and slow it down. So it Kurtz's legendary skillet fried chicken. Oh man, I, I just want to look at that. Mm -hmm. That is so moist. Can you hear that? <laughs> mm. Yeah, we'll retake this a few times. <laughs> what? The crunch. The, that's the crispiest skin. You guys have to come to Kurtz for dinner. We got the special treatment, and you got to get the skill of fried chicken. Donna, I cannot thank you enough. You're give me welcome. a shake, the give me a squeeze. To watch you at work and watch you work in that skillet to learn how to do it the right way to serve real Kentucky Southern food here at Kurtz's. That was that was a treat. Well, thank food, you. It's, it's delicious, but watching the whole process mm -hmm. and it's you think it's simple, it's not. Yeah. I don't know if you know how good you are, Mom, but you are good. <laughs> you are good. You're thank the real you. deal. Patience boys was way Right. Great time back there frying up the chicken. There he Deb, is. I'm back. Did you have a good time? Oh, that was incredible. Did I you got class? I have some samples. I got my, I, I think I'm ready to go. Good. But I'm ready to, you know, show me a little more tour, a little more of the tour history. Tour the house? This is my mom. Oh, I thought this Marilyn? was your baby sister over here. <laughs> Marilyn. Marilyn. So your parents started this. Oh, oh, great. 75 years ago, 1937. See, my mother was, was a farm wife. I mean, they moved up here after the 37 flood. And mother said, well, she'd just open a sandwich shop right across from the park, fix picnics for people to pick up and take to the park to eat. So this was so where it started right here. this is right where it started, right here. And we lived upstairs. This was uh -huh. the original dining room. Still, a, still the main dining still room. Still the original like, dining room, the main dining room. pie case here. Pie case, that, those are the pies that Debbie cooked upstairs. That are her. down here now. Try to talk her into taking me up there to show me how to do some pies. You think you can help me out with that? Well, she does the pies more than I do. Well, I mean, maybe you can just help me get access. If you could tell her that. <laughs> oh, access. Oh, yeah, that or I something. got that, yeah. So this stone brought with you from the original from farm. From the farm, uh huh. And uh, I think the contract has to lay the stone on this entire building is $500. $500? That's and these, insane. These walls are that thick, as you That's can tell. Thick. Uh -huh. Okay, now. So the upstairs here, this was the living quarters? Yes, but this was added on later. So, so this was added on later? Yes. How roughly when did you add on to the front? About 20 years ago. So yes. until your parents passed, this was still the living quarters? Yes. So this, this was a screened in porch across the front here. So you could come out here back in the 40s yes. and it was a beautiful screened in porch. porch and get that nice and country. And that round air. door there, that's the doorway that I, my wedding picture's in that doorway. You, it was taken right in that doorway? Uh -huh, yeah. Right. Any time I start thinking I'm going to get depressed or something, I live right up at the motel office. I just shake my shoulders and walk out and it's the best medicine you could take is to greet people. So, so have you ever contemplating retiring or have they ever tried to tell you, hey, you need uh, yeah, to quit they, working? When I was hit my 65th birthday, they had a banner in front of the restaurant and everybody thought I was retiring, but it didn't take. No, I, no not a chance, huh? <laughs> no, not you, a chance. To, you have to be somewhere, and I'd rather be here with people. Yeah, well, thank you so much for sharing all this history with us and with, with the whole country and the town of Bardstown. You guys have opened your doors, and they've stayed open and welcomed so many people in here with this kind of welcome, this kind of tradition. That's, it's a rare treasure, mm -hmm. it really is, and, um, but one of the many treasures here in Bardstown. All right, guys, this is the secret door. We got to do the skillet chicken downstairs. Now we're on the second floor, heading back to the pie shop. A little crash in down there. Debbie, come on. Oh, Miss Debbie. We're coming yes, in. Sir. Hey, how you doing? Good. Well, Good. just had a great tour with uh, Marilyn, and I kind of decided I was going to make my way back to the bake shop. I had to find out not just the skillet chicken, but I want to see these pies and that biscuit pudding in action. Show me great. The so here we are back, VIP access in the pastry shop here, the bake shop. We're <laughs> on the second floor of Kurtz, and um, time for the next step, these wonderful pies and the biscuit pudding. So Coconut cream, lemon meringue, chocolate meringue pie, and biscuit pudding with a bourbon raisin sauce. You ready three. to go? I'm ready to go. So this is the base for the biscuit That's pudding. That's the base for the biscuit Tell pudding. Tell about how this started. 
started, we served breakfast and we needed a way to use our um, biscuits that we did not serve at breakfast. So these have to be two to three days old before it can make this pudding. So it's got the right texture. So it's got the right texture. Mushy. They, again, right. they've got to have a little bit of body. And the funny part is up. now we don't have breakfast. So we have to make fresh biscuits, fresh biscuits and let them be three days old before we can make our biscuit pudding. It always <laughs> happens like that, huh? That's the way it works. Creaming biscuits. Cream the biscuits. And here's my milk and eggs. Oh, there's the base. Making my batter. We're going to pour it in. Right on. Stir it around. Can't you move any faster? What is the matter with you? <laughs> this woman is a dynamo. You're a ninja. Yeah, going back I have here. biscuit pudding sauce going there. Sauce. So I'm going to step over to the sink. Is and there bourbon involved in that sauce? There's, there is bourbon involved in that sauce. A heavy hit. The All right, you want to pour goes it in, in these. Yes, sir. Half oh, and half. half you and kind half. of do a little bit so the biscuits don't all end up in one pan. All right. Until it's all gone. Just kind of even it up. Well, bourbon, bourbon soaked raisins. I bet these are the happiest raisins in the these world. These are the happiest. It's nothing like breakfast Whoa! with bourbon and raisins. That is, that's more bourbon than raisins in there. And now it slides right in the oven. These are pickled, pickled raisins. All right, I'm putting it in. We're going in, Deb. In the middle. Middle shelf. Yes, Her. sir. This is my country kitchen boot camp here is what this is. <laughs> what have you got in the back pot over here? Uh, the back pot has... Sugar, sugar, water, water, butter. What do you have in there right now? Eggs. That's eggs. all. It's a thickening so agent. Slow. Uh huh. You got the eggs for the liaison to thicken that up. That heat's going to cook those eggs. Add them in slowly like that. They won't scramble. Nope. It's going to give such a great velvety texture to that you, sauce. And sir, if you'll hand me that barrel bottle of Jim oh, Beam over there. Oh, bourbon. Now, of course. We have this recipe, and it is uh, always able to pick it up at Kurtz's. Once you try our biscuit pudding, we give our recipe. This is, and this is standard. Uh, this one, the big three pies, and this is and a, this. on the menu all the time. All the time. Do you even bother to try to do any seasonal desserts? Or I do. Or we do pumpkin pie in the, oh, in the fall, okay. and then uh, cherry and peach cobblers when their fruits are in season. And uh, homemade chest pies turned into a big seller at Kurtz's restaurant. Oh. Um, it took me a long time to find my grandmother's recipe, but I think we've pretty, got it. Pretty good bit of bourbon there, baby. <laughs> oh, more of those? More of those. Oh! You know, do you ever come in and that jar looks a little low? I, I, it, I do not, like, no. We're, we're like in bourbon peanuts. country. It's in our air. It permeates us at birth. <laughs> so that's ready to go? It's ready to go. Biscuit pudding's cooking. Pies are cooking. I'm good. You got that beautiful pie case we saw? Yes, These will be there shortly. They will. VIP backstage, big <laughs> shop action with Debbie. Third generation at Kurtz. Thank you. This has been incredible, guys. This is, let's, we're just going to go on and continue our journey through Bardstown. That sounds what great. What a great stop. Make we're sure glad you're here. You come by Kurtz and get some That's of this good. great skillet fried chicken, homemade pies, and your biscuit pudding. Signature dessert. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Wow, guys, that was a great time here in the Kurtz Family Restaurant. Now I'd love to show you another famous family home, probably the most famous in the whole state of Kentucky, and it's just across the street. In 1852, a 26-year-old American composer came to Bartstown to visit Federal Hill, a home owned by the Rowan family, a relative of his. He enjoyed his time here so much, he was inspired to write a stirring ballad, simply titled, My Old Kentucky Home, first published in 1853. And today, not only can you see Federal Hill on the back of the Kentucky State Quarter, but right here in person at My Old Kentucky Home State Park in Bartstown.
construction of Federal Hill actually began in 1795. And here to tell us more about the history of the homes, the families that lived here, and some of the famous visitors is my new friend, Ann. How are you doing, Ann? I'm doing fine. How are you? Good. Ann's been welcoming visitors here and giving tours for 15 years now. Would you like to come along? I'll show you around. I would love to hear more about the history of the family all here. All righty. Tell me all about it. Now the portrait here, this is the first generation of builder of the home, John Rowan Sr. He was a lawyer, a judge, a U.S. representative, and a U.S. senator. The judge married the lady here, Ann Lytle. Uh, she was from Cincinnati, Ohio. So when they married, her father gave them approximately 300 acres here. So would you like to hear some more about the family music that they have here at home? Would love to. Okay, just join me right here into the best parlor. A prisoner bound myself. The judge left $500 in his will for his youngest granddaughter to have a piano. This is an 1835 Ambler of New York. The wood is rosewood and the keys are the original mother of pearl keys. Gorgeous. This is beautiful. Tell me about The this desk one. here, that was the judge's desk. It was used in his law office. All the items that you see on it are also the judge's. Uh, the glasses, the uh, ledger. So Stephen Foster actually wrote my old Kentucky home here in this home. Uh, is there any chance that they still have uh, any of the furniture or any history about when he actually wrote the song here? Sure. Follow me and we'll walk out here and I'll show you his desk. Thank you. The desk here is the desk that uh, the family tradition has said that uh, Stephen sat and wrote the song Mile Kentucky. Right here. That's amazing. And he was uh, quite the composer in his day. Yes. He was born on July 4th, 1826 on the outskirts of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He died on January 13, 1864, at the age of 37, from pneumonia while living in New York. He composed over uh, 200 songs. His last song published was Beautiful Dreamer, and it was published uh, three months after his death. Now, during the summer of 1852, family tradition does say that Stephen and his wife was here visiting. It was during that visit that he wrote the song, My Old Kentucky Home, published in 1853 became our state song in 1928. He wrote a lot of American lot. classics, over 200 now songs. Now he's the classics. only American songwriter to have the honor of having two state songs. Kentucky chose My Old Kentucky Home Good Night mm -hmm. and Florida chose Swanee River. Fantastic, two state songs, that's incredible. Federal Hill stayed in the Rowan family until 1920 when its future became intertwined with a major event in our American history which would bring Bartstown's most famous industry to an abrupt and indefinite stop. In 1919, Congress ratified the 18th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which included a provision to prohibit the manufacture and sale of liquor. The local bourbon industry was shut down, and locals from grain farmers to bourbon retailers were forced into a dire situation. Bartstown had to find a new industry to power their local economy, and they needed to find it fast. Bardstown had its own unique story, and the telling of the story would be the means to attract visitors and tourists. Federal Hill was already considered a state treasure due to its connection to Stephen Foster and his famous ballad. So in 1920, with the prohibition in full swing, a public effort to purchase Federal Hill from the Rowan family succeeded. The home's next important visitor would be the general public. Federal Hill, along with its land, became my old Kentucky home state park. In 1928, Stephen Foster's ballad, My Old Kentucky Home, became the official state song of Kentucky. For decades after Prohibition, Federal Hill's most famous visitors and the story of Stephen Foster became the focal point of My Old Kentucky Home State Park. So Pete, how would you like to play a role into some of Bardstown's history? I think I would love that. Well, I've got to give you fair warning. It's going to take you back to the 1800 time period. Oh, I think I can handle that. All right, well take my arm. All right. And I, I'm going to take you there, but I, I cannot stay because I've got other things I've got to do. That's okay, I'm ready. Okay. On the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> 
Gary Vitato, Gary, and I'm, I'm with the Stephen Foster story, as with the rest of these folks. Wow, and you're fantastic. at the Stephen Foster story, right this where is, we do this show every night and have done it for 54 years. 54 years, this is incredible. This is amazing. I can't believe this. Here I am, ready to go. Here you look like the rest of us. I kind of do. I feel like the rest of you. I don't sing like the rest of you. <laughs> well, how would you like to be in the show tonight? Oh my God, that would be incredible. Me in the show? Yeah. Come on. What do you really? think, guys? Yeah. I'll give it a shot. Okay, great. Well, let's go inside. We're going to be in the show tonight. You guys are going to get the real treat. This is small town flavor. Go on, I'm going backstage. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. I am from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. We just finished rehearsals and the pressure is really on for tonight. Although I'm nervous, I think I'm up for the challenge. And who knows, maybe next stop is Broadway. But I seriously doubt that. So we're here at the My Old Kentucky Home State Park learning about how the resiliency of Bartstown, how it reacted to prohibition by creating a complete tourism and visitors industry just by telling the stories of its history. Now, enough of the prohibition years, we're going on to see how Bartstown reacted after the 30s into the bourbon industry with some new family traditions. Still ahead on Small Town Flavor. Oh my God, that is a whole new level of Small Town Flavor in this glass. Craig Beam. I'm Fred No. I'm Ken Pierce. My name is Drew Coolsfeam. Cheers. 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 Fresh, delicious, and prepared almond hoop on a train. Big debut in the Stephen Foster story. Mm -hmm. 